Okay, so this is our green waste compost, which is also uh, used by the people from the neighbourhood. This so is that... something that I'm used to seeing, you know, the typical green waste organics going in there and breaking down. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of this stuff that's just getting carted to landfill, and that's yeah. just crazy, you know. It's, it's, it is. So to... people can come in from the street and then just put their compost. Yeah, yeah. The, the greens. Yep. Yeah. They can even turn it if they want to. <laughs> yeah, I you reckon know, you'd yeah, be pay, pay, more than pay. happy for you to have it turned over. How long does it last before, uh, well, before it turns into compost here? Well, uh, we try to get it turned at least twice a week, yeah. and that, that will obviously speed up the process. Exactly, you know, so. okay. So in about, what, two months, three months it's ready, if not earlier? Yeah, I'd say three months, yeah. yeah. So people pay good money to go to the gym, you know. They, exactly. We, we can, they can come here for nothing and turn to compost. Just leave a shovel and a pitchfork there for them, folks, because after a couple of months, or at least about three months, I suppose, it'll look like this stuff over here. Mm. Now, I heard you've also got a worm farm going on here. Yeah, well, uh, Is it we've, active? we've got a couple, as a matter of fact. Have yeah, you? So, yeah, we've got yeah. some that are just made out of car tyres. Yeah, I haven't yeah. seen that done before. Can no, you show me that one? No worries. A few different bits of pieces to the whole setup. As well, you you've got timber on top, mesh on top. Doormat. Yeah. And then the worms are in here, so you can see some of the little ones just wow. poking around there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful. We're given the message you just can re use recycled materials, you know, yeah. rather than having to go and buy something off the shelf. Exactly, you know. Creativity. Exactly. And, you, and it looks cool too. That's Second hand tyres. Yeah. Come on, show me your talent. Go on. There he goes. Ooh, Look at that. No, the roots haven't quite I don't grown know if yet. He's going to like that, but yeah. Well, we'll that hole's a little bit big for that little plant yeah. there. Yeah. Let's cover it up. There you go. I think you're talented enough. <laughs> your, your thumbs are pretty green at the moment, yeah. even though they look a little bit brown. There we are. Yeah, well, that's still standing up straight. Mate, let's get this happening, get them all planted out, and we'll move on, eh? What do you yep. reckon? Let's There's go. A lot to do. Just finished planting out the beautiful garden bed here with all these different veggies. Now we're going to mulch it. Is that right? Yeah, we don't want to leave the soil nude, so let's get it covered Ooh, with some lucerne. Get a bit cold there, wouldn't it? That's the lucerne. Yep. Let's do it. There you go, folks. Planting with Vasily and Paul here down at Port Phillip Eco Centre. Now the lucerne. What benefits do we get from the lucerne? Also, like us, the soil doesn't want to be nude. Um, the lucerne's going to well, give it a bit of... That's a personal choice the there, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I know some people out, out there... Out in don't public, mind. this oh, is a community yeah, 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 ecocentre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, go on. Okay, so, so, yeah, it's going to function a little bit as an insulation yeah. and a slow breakdown of nutrients yeah. into our lovely soil. Yeah, and help keep a little bit of moisture in there too, stop the soil yeah. from crossing over. Not that I think it would anyway, but this is fantastic. So plant away in your garden, do it today, get out there. What are you doing with all these? What are these? Well, olive, olive, olive oil bottles or well, containers? My motto is there's opportunity in chaos, right? So all of these wheelie bins we're going to get chucked out by the council, actually recycled, taken away and melted down turned into other plastic objects. Sure, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. all these houses here. They're looking for their bins now. You've just cut them <laughs> off in half and just lined them up here. No oh, one can tell the difference. That. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> all right, so these have been, these were going to be recycled, but you've had a bit of, yeah. bit of use for them. Well, that's right. So it's a free material that we can okay. make use of. Uh, and we were looking for a way to farm water ribbons, which are a bush tucker plant, that yeah. if you were going to get them, the restaurants want them because they're delicious. You bake them, the tube is on the roots. Yeah. Fantastic. But if you're going to get them, you're going to have to go and dig up the Mary Creek. Okay. It's probably full of all sorts of contaminants or you've got to travel you know, hundreds of kilometres out of town to get them. The basis is if you can grow these successfully quite you know, within uh, a couple of kilometres of the restaurant. I love you. That's right. And we're using <laughs> the worm juice to feed the water ribbons. Okay. Uh, and yeah. and yeah. just growing them in bluestone ballast, uh, seven millimetre aggregate. Yeah, yeah. As you can see in the... In the stuff uh, here. Yeah. That's it. That's all it is. Nothing else and just a little bit of worm juice. Which and makes you... it easier to harvest them because right. you just pull them up. You're not willing to pull one up for Vasily, are you? Not for anybody. Not even you. Oh, oh check it out. That? Maybe we should chuck it in the wok and see what happens, eh? You reckon? Why not? Why not? Well, we've got the bread and the pumpkin soup going on there. A little bit of water ribbon wouldn't go astray. Tell me, what have you done with this? Once upon a time, it used to be a willy bin. Yeah, this is... Um... Paula's invention, it's basically a wicking bed. So we're, we're looking at growing uh, 
ideas that people can put on their balconies. Okay, so a wicking bed, explain what a wicking bed is. We've got raised garden beds, we've got garden beds, we've got pots and all that. This is a wicking bed. Yeah, I guess it's uh, the idea, as I understand it, is watering from the bottom up. All right, so how does it work? Explain the concept, um, the the, the construction of it. Well, uh, it's uh, got uh, this hose going right down to the bottom. That's a slotted hose, so that actually allows yeah. moisture to travel yeah. through. And, and I haven't actually seen how this was put together, but yeah. uh, the idea is though that the water can go down there yeah. and then percolate up through, or yeah, like absorbed. a pillar reaction, I suppose, yeah. up through the soil. Yeah, it's a very deluxe model, this one, I tell I you. I like it, I like it. It just needs its wheels back. <laughs> <From> <laughs> <laughs> move those silly wicking beds, mate. It's, it's, it's a really good idea. <laughs> it is. <laughs> You're full of it. <laughs> I really love the artwork here. Jeez, it's really nice. Yeah, it's brilliant. It, uh, it's too good, really, for what the subject's about, you know, because we've uh, really... It's creative. It's creative, but uh, it's basically letting people know what's floating around in the bay. All of this stuff was found on the beaches in the top of Port Phillip Bay and the Yarra. You're kidding. No, uh, that's right. It's all come from out oh of our waterways. Oh, my Lord. My yeah. God, all this stuff was, what, picked up from the bay, the, the, the beach? And yeah. Killed the Yarra... Yeah, it didn't take long to find it either, and that's, this is only a small proportion of what was collected, but Carmel, who, uh, the artist... Who's my together. thong? I've yeah. been looking for that. It's a beauty, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the, the reality is in the Pacific Ocean, there's a soup, it's a, about as a big as Victoria, floating around of, uh, where uh, this sort of stuff's been carried there by the ocean currents. And it's yeah, just so it's just collecting. Yeah. Recycle your products, people. Don't allow this to happen. If this is going into our oceans, can you imagine what it's doing to our ecosystem, our environment? It's a no-no. Plastic. It all comes down to human behaviour. We can do better than this, I reckon. I think so. Is it nearly done? What's going on? Oh, rock. check it out. Yeah, right oh, away. So yeah. they come out of the oven. Ah, um, look at that. And I, I left some ginger. Yeah. Whacked it all in the pot. It's all done. Blended it's it all ready. Up. It's a nice pumpkin soup. That's ready to go. That's and it. I don't even need my teeth. I can take them out then, eh? Because it's all <laughs> nice and creamy. Is it bread ready too? Looks pretty ready to me. Oh, <laughs> we've got the pumpkin soup ready. We've got our bread ready. We've got our lemon delicious pudding. Is that correct? What it is? It's not a pudding, is it? Yeah, lemon yeah. and grapefruit. And grapefruit, <laughs> delicious. So we're going to serve that. Sit back and have a great feast. Oh, I can't wait. Look what I've got for you. Give mate. me two servings, please. Oh, Greek style yogurt! <laughs> <laughs> Which you can use in the soup and yeah. on the uh, dessert. Very versatile. And oh. actually, it was used in the um, beetroot dip that we went And that's up beetroot those. from the garden, too. Straight from the garden. Oh, we're going to have a beautiful feed now. We've had a wonderful time out here at Port Phillip Eco Centre in St Kilda with the lovely volunteers and Neil himself. He's got his guitar ready. Now they're going to dance a Zorba for us. You reckon they can do it? But remember, get involved with your local community. Grow your own, cook it yourself and stop using that bloody plastic. See you next week!